Chris Bishop. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, it's a pleasure to take a call on the sale and supply of alcohol extended licensing hours during the Rugby World Cup bill. I want to start my contribution um, to the House uh, tonight by congratulating the member uh, in charge of this bill, um, David Seymour. I think David is building a, um, a well-deserved reputation of this House, uh, sir, as a, a solid and conscientious MP who's perhaps um, putting some of the issues Order. of his party uh, aside. Uh, from the past and is advancing oh, sorry, good bills like this. Sorry, I, I, will, I am going to require the, uh, uh, the Chief Opposition uh, Whip to withdraw that comment. I withdraw. Chris Bishop. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I didn't actually hear what he said, and neither did David, but anyway, um, I'm sure, sure Mr Seymour appreciates um, uh, that withdrawal. Uh, sir, I also want to put on the record uh, the the good way in which the Justice and Electoral Committee worked on this bill uh, during the, the process, the, the slightly truncated, or not more, slightly more than slightly, uh, the truncated process that the committee uh, dealt with this bill, and it was well Order. chaired by my colleague uh, Jackie Dean. Uh, and I, I think it is fair to say, and, and even um, some members who may, may be voting against the bill uh, tonight in its second and third reading would acknowledge that the committee worked in a, a collegial and, and consultative and deliberative um, way. Uh, particularly want to um, pay tribute to the uh, hard work that Clayton Mitchell from New Zealand First uh, did on the bill. Uh, Clayton's experience as someone who, ha who has been a licensee, who's run um, a number of establishments in his uh, hometown, uh, that proved very useful with working through some of the more technical and practical um, issues. And, and so I think uh, he, he made a very uh, useful contribution. Also, Jacinda Ardern, uh, with her from the Labour Party, with her uh, experience of, uh, of Auckland Central and her, um, her, uh, her neck of the woods, uh, was able to provide some practical examples of um, how the bill might um, work in practice and how um, licensees may take advantage or not take advantage over some particular aspects um, of the bill. Sir, so the, the public policy problem that really confronted uh, us on the committee um, is we want uh, licensed premises, bars and clubs to be able to uh, stay open during the Rugby World Cup to show the Rugby World Cup games. Uh, and it's just worth just stepping through the logic as to how we got to this point. So the public policy problem is, we, uh, or the public policy issue is we want the bars to be open. Uh, and why is that? Because uh, people enjoy watching rugby, particularly Rugby World Cup games, uh, with other people with like-minded uh, friends and family, with other rugby fans. There's a, as I said during the Bill's first reading, there is uh, some sort of element of collective endeavour about willing the, uh, the All Blacks on or, or willing the South Africans on, if, uh, if you're a, the Springboks on, if you're a South African. Um, you know, it's slightly irrational. Uh, you get together with people uh, who are all All Blacks fans, or if you're a, that, or a Springbok fan, you get together, get together with other Springbok fans, and you, and you know, slightly irrational that you sort of there is the sense that if you all get together and and wish that they win as much as you can, um, then that it will happen. Um, and you know, whether or not that's true or not, it's certainly not true. Um, there is something you know noble about doing that, almost I would say, sir. Um, uh, as, as Mr. Seaver points out, there's no proof it doesn't work, but that's that's true. But so, so we want that to be able to happen, and you know, a lot of people do. A lot of people don't have Sky TV. A lot of people, even if they do have Sky TV, you know, may want to go go um, down to the a, a bar uh, and watch it. Um, but the problem that confronted us, sir, is that the games in the Rugby World Cup uh, fall. Some of them, uh, particularly the ones that people want to watch, fall outside standing standard licensing hours. So that's really why the bill has come to Parliament. Now, some people will say, well, there's a special licence process. Uh, uh, licensees should go through that. They should apply for a special licence. Uh, and that's all well and good, sir, except for the fact that uh, we heard as a committee, uh, and, and certainly this has been out there in the public debate, that the process for the application of special licences is a reasonably cumbersome one, that there were some uh, onerous requirements being placed on people who uh, were thinking about applying or had already applied, things like um, you, you had to have a guest speaker, there had to be dress-ups, uh, there had to be a, a, a series of things that you know, perhaps would take it into the realm of a special event. And you know, really, uh, is, it, is it fair enough to say you have to have a guest speaker in order to open the bar to show an All Blacks game? You know, I would argue, and, and certainly it's the view of the government, uh, that you shouldn't be able to. Now, there was a suggestion made that we could just essentially limit this piece of legislation to uh, a clarificatory piece of legislation, just define just make it clear, just make Parliament's intent clear uh, that um, 
you know, a, 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 an event, or, or just holding the Rugby World Cup game would be um, a special event um, for the purposes um, of the Act. Um, but that's not, the, that's not the path that we have decided to go down. Instead, what we've got is um, clarificatory legislation, I think, of a different ilk, um, and one that's actually an amendment to the Sale and Supply of Liquor Act, which I'll come to in a moment, uh, sir. So what this bill does is it makes it easier to open for bars and licensed premises to show Rugby World Cup games so that it's easier for New Zealanders who wish to avail themselves of that opportunity uh, to do that, sir. Uh, sir, the bill preserves the situation that if, you, that if a, a bar owner or a licensee owner has already uh, applied for an existing special licence, um, Section 45G, or what will become Section 45G uh, of the Sale and Supply of Liquor Act, allows um, people who have availed themselves of that opportunity to continue down that route. Um, if, if you like, sir, that they are, they're, they're allowed to continue to uh, use that purposes of the special licence they've already provided, or indeed they can choose uh, the route uh, that we're providing for um, in this Act. So the Select Committee has made a number of amendments um, to the bill which make it more workable and make it more sensible. But in my in, uh, the other thing I want to do in my contribution, sir, is just to pick up on one of the points that Penny Hinare made, which is to re repeat the assertion, the wrong assertion, sir, that we have a binge drinking culture uh, in New Zealand, and particularly amongst young people, sir. This is a widely understood uh, fact, sir, but it is actually a myth. And I want to put, sir, on the record some actual facts around alcohol consumption in New Zealand society. So firstly, sir, the World Health Report in 2014 did a world report, a global report, on the use of alcohol in societies. And actually, sir, what, what that report shows is that by international standards, New Zealanders actually drink a moderate amount. So we're 96th in the world for uh, alcohol consumption. We drink about 13.7 pure litres of alcohol per capita. So that places us 96th in the world. It's slightly less than the United Kingdom, it's slightly more than France. So actually we are on average, internationally, we are average drinkers. What about binge drinking, sir? Well by international standards, New Zealanders are very low binge drinkers. So our prevalence rate of binge drinking is 5.6%. That's half that of Australia's, I'm quoting the World Health Organisation, that's half that of Australia, it's a quarter of Canada's, and it's one-sixth of the United Kingdom binging prevalence rate. So is the assertion correct that we are a nation of binge drinkers? No. What about the assertion that, we, that our young people in particular are binge drinkers, sir? Well, the best data on binge drinking amongst young people comes from the Auckland University study, which was published in 2012. This is a longitudinal study that has been updated in 2001 and in 2007 and in 2012. It's quite, actually quite remarkable. Here are some facts about, about young people and drinking. The proportion of young people who drink has dropped 25% in the last five years. That's from 2007 to 2012. It is a third that of the rate in 2000. What about, sir, the number of people who are regular drinkers? That dropped 9 per cent between 2007 and 12. The number of people who are regular drinkers is half that it was in 2000. This is amongst young people, sir. What about the people who are young binge drinkers? What about the number of people who say that they've binge drink in the last month? In the, between 2007 and 12, the number of young people in New Zealand who say that they've binge drink in the last month has dropped by 18 per cent. And again, the rate is half that since 1990. So people often say liberalisation of our liquor laws was a disaster, that the 1989 reforms were a disaster. It led to this binge drinking culture. That's not true. They say that it led to young people getting drunk more and more. Again, sir, the facts actually belie that. The number of young people drinking is declining. The number of young people binging is declining. The number of young people who drink regularly is declining. And actually, the alcohol-related harm that comes from young people drinking is going down as well. These are the facts. They come from the World Health Organization and the, the best data we have from Auckland University. The alcohol liberalisation in New Zealand, sir, has worked. And I just closed my speech and my contribution to this debate with those remarks, because too often, sir, in this society, young people are defamed by people who seek to ascribe uh, characteristics and behaviour to them that is simply not borne out by the facts. It is simply not borne out by the reality. Young people are drinking less.
they are binge drinking less, and harm from young people drinking is going down. With that, sir, I commend this bill to the House.